for today. Uh, Mr. Anil Bharadwaj, uh, Secretary General of, of FISM. Hi, Mr. Bharadwaj. Uh, Mr. Jyoti Prakash uh, Kadia, Managing Director of uh, Resurgent India. Hi, Mr. Kadia. Uh, Mr. Pushan Sharma, uh, Director at uh, Chrysal. Hi, Mr. Sharma. Welcome. Uh, Mr. Amit Sharma, uh, uh, Mr. Amit Kumar, sorry, uh, founder and CEO at uh, MSME. Hi, Mr. Kumar. And uh, finally, uh, Mr. Ambikanan Jha, uh, General Manager and Zonal Head at uh, Yuko Bank. Welcome, Mr. Jha. So, I think I'll address my first question to Mr. Bharadwaj here. See, on the eve of MSME Day, a survey which was conducted by a fintech, uh, it showed that access to credit still remains the top demand of MSMEs. Uh, we have around 200 schemes, uh, you know, which looks at government schemes, which look at financing MSMEs, uh, which have outlays of several lakh crores. Uh, but access to credit is still a problem. Uh, what can be done to solve that? Uh, thank you, first of all, for giving me this opportunity. I think uh, before we really uh, get to the prescriptions, I mean, let's spend a minute in understanding that what is the size of the problem. The RBI report 2019 said that the credit, total requirement of the credit in India was to the tune of 37 lakh crore. Out of that, all banking and financial institutions, including NBFCs, could provide approximately 15-16 lakh crore. So there was a gap in 2019 between 15 to 20 lakh crore. Now three, four years have passed. The recent RBI data says that the total financial institutions, again, the formal sector have been able to provide loans up till 21 lakh crore. So that leaves us to the credit, credit grab if we look at the growth also and the requirement. Uh, it would be in the tune of 20 to 25 lakh crore. 20 to 25 lakh crore is still is a huge sum of credit gap that exists in the MSME sector. The obvious question then would be why? First of all, the difficulty is that I mean, you could make a matrix, formality, like, you know, 90% of the MSMEs are in the informal sector. Then size, micro, small, medium, all three segments have different requirement. And then also that the kind of market they serve, like, for example, if they are serving a market which is quite local in nature, their requirement of financial products is very simple, vanilla products would do. But if they are part of a larger supply chain, especially international supply chain, their financial products need would be very advanced. And uh, the standard prescription would be that, you know, there should be literacy, there would be credit guarantee schemes, there would be uh, uh, alternative financial institutions like MFIs, P2P, and uh, VC funds, etc. I would like to say from my experience that there are two unsettled areas which are largely responsible for this credit gap. And if you allow me, I'll spend two minutes. One is that uh, regulatory bottlenecks and second is institutional gaps. In regulatory bottlenecks, I was just speaking to somebody before, uh, I mean, uh, coming to you and talking to you, that almost 80 to 90 percent of micro and small enterprises or businesses in India, they operate from unauthorized space, that is unapproved space. So, because the commercial, the, the way cities are planned in India, they are not 20 years ahead, but basically cities have come up, they are growing up, and ultimately people are have starting business from their home, near their, uh, I mean, wherever, on the streets, bazaars that are coming up, but they are not approved as such. And because of that, they find it very difficult to access finance because they are not authorized. So, they can't access finance from the financial institution, they cannot register themselves and take advantage of the schemes that you have mentioned, 200 scheme. So 
no matter whether 200 scheme or 2000 schemes, if you are not registered, then you are not allowed, etc. This is one major, major problem. The second is that, uh, again, uh, whether laws related to pollution control, fire department, or getting the maps approved from the MCDs or uh, the urban bodies, it becomes impossible because of this. you are living in unauthorized space, uh, delayed payment related provisions, and government disputes. All put together, they somehow strangle uh, an MSME to such an extent, they find it very difficult. And they all require reforms that are related to regulations. Coming to institutional gaps, uh, for example, you must have heard about IBC, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code. Now, if you're a large company or if you're a company like registered as a private company, and if the company fails, it can go to IBC. And uh, a promoter can have an honorable exit that provides you for that. But if you are an MSME, 97% of them are proprietorship partnership firms. There is no IBC code available for them. For them, failure means jail. So I can cite such examples. And I think ultimately what I'm trying to say is that you have to address these two set of questions. You have to fill the gap that are there in the institutional space and then also address and reform in the regulatory space. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bharadwaj. Let us get the banker's view on this uh, credit cap. Mr. Jha, I mean, is regulatory bottleneck the reason or, or your credit underwriting models don't allow you to, uh, you know, lend to most MSMEs? Uh, the major challenges uh, my colleague has already uh, cited. See, when uh, we bankers, we feel that we are always looking for some good proposals and we are missing out on those. And whenever we are going for uh, such conferences, meetings, I find there are MSMEs who are not getting funds. So there is a challenge to fill this gap. Because see the bankers, for bankers, MSME is no more uh, one of the areas where we are looking to land. This is one of the core areas where we want to land now. And say for our bank, we were the third uh, fastest uh, growth we posted last year. So that speaks that this is a big space. This speaks for all the banks. What I feel, and there are a lot of schemes also, now up to 10 crore, now startup also funding is uh, based on guarantee coverage. So it looks like that the space of entry level where bookkeeping or the understanding of how a MSME, I'm talking first small scale, how they will be making a bankable proposals. So if that is very well done, very nicely done, and those banks who are willing to go a helping hand and make sure that they also help them in getting this a bankable proposal. If the proposal anyway is bankable, he helps and make it a bankable. Then it is a very good proposition. But there is a gap where, uh, suppose last week on a Sunday, we had a VC meeting with one of the startups for a 15 crore uh, funding. And the first thing he congratulated me for doing a VC on a Sunday. And it was a surprise for him. So it may happen uh, that the process uh, may not be same across India. So is it a knowledge gap you are talking about? See, uh, I would not say only in MSME. From the banker's perspective also across there is a uh, gap. And uh, that today many startups are much smarter than bankers also. So their bankers are also struggling to match pace with their knowledge level also. So we also try to understand that how they are doing business, what business they are doing, their mo business models also sometimes we take some time to understand, the revenue models we take some time to understand. So as long as there is a mutual understanding and willingness to learn and funding is part of that. So I mean there's no as such reluctance uh, which per se sometimes we feel that bankers are unwilling to lend. Uh, at least that is not the case, that's what we feel. But Mr. Kumar, I'd like to come to you. How can this knowledge gap be addressed? I mean, when an MSME has to go and present a proposal to a banker, how can we ensure that they do it properly so that both sides are on the same page? Yeah, so uh, as rightly pointed out by both the pan panel members that uh, there is a clear-cut gap between the uh, eligibility and capability. So the government or policy, they decide the eligibility and everyone gets into a hope that I am eligible, I should get it. But in real sense, the capability is lacking, which means uh, right from uh, being financially literate and preparing the books and preparing proposal to submitting and convincing and pitching rather. 
because asking for loan is not the right that I should get it because I am eligible. Is the institution which is giving the lending, uh, they need to earn it back. So they need to find out the right proposition to give it to someone and that's where if 10 people are eligible, they will look for one or two who is capable. Now in this case, uh, what we do at MSMAX, we are making them financially literate, we are helping them, whoever is coming forward. But the challenge is that people are not ready to come forward for these things easily because it is a mindset issue also that I need to accept that I am not prepared enough, capable enough to prepare a proposal or a pitch to a bank because it is, it is so engrossed uh, in the MSME that if you are eligible go to bank or walk into a bank and come out with a check. That is the kind of perception which is created. However it should be that you need to go and pitch to a bank. You need to go and pitch to an investor. You need to convince them. You need to prove it to them that you are a good business and you deserve that. And this requires preparation. And those who are evolved, they have better mindset, they are open in their mind, they come to us, we prepare them. But if you are not ready to accept, uh, the help is difficult in that case. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gardia, I mean, what do you think? I mean, is it, is it purely a knowledge gap or, you know, do we need better uh, uh, credit underwriting models? Uh, do banks and NBFCs, do they need to look at uh, cash flow lending, for example, which seems to be a lot of people are talking about, you know, that we should, we should look at that. Thank you. And uh, I think so I'm in a rightly situation or at a rightly poised because of the profession that I am. I act as an intermediary between the MSME who is looking for the loan and the banks which gives the loan. So I bridge that gap and supportedly, sir, we are one of the biggest consultants in the country. Last year we helped around 50,000 crore of fundraising for approximately around 2,800 corporates in India with the pan-India presence. So this is what we do in terms of the understanding and whatever the documentation gap and this is. So we tell people ki, sir, we act as an interpreter because banker ki a color language hai. Banker has got their own language. They might be speaking English, but whatever the words that they might be using and the MSMEs that they might be understanding, there can be huge gap difference that, that definitely can be arising. I can give you numerous examples of that ki bankers might be saying this. And when there is a communication, when you ask an entrepreneur ki aapne kya samjha jab banker ne ye baat bola, tab aapko samajh mein aata ki oh, this is absolutely ridiculous. Matlab, jo wo samajh ki aaya aur jo wo baat kar raha hai, whatever that is understanding about this. So, just to bridge this gap, then we thought, then I thought ki sir, ye toh bhout bada gap hai, how to bridge this? So, we started our own fintech company called scoreme.in. In scoreme.in, we started building up a platform where it is an automated platform where customer comes on board and the sanction letter is generated. Approximately 150 banks and NBFCs are using those platforms. Front ending is their name. It can be State Bank of India, Union Bank of India, go to any other bank, any big bank. It is powered by scoreme. So now, on the back end, I tell you on what grounds those applications are getting rejected. Now I've got that first-hand data and information of telling you this. 22% last year approximately every day, I suppose approximately around 18,000 applications are running on ScoreMe. I don't know about any other platform or any other thing. I'm just telling you about our platform, ki hamare platform pe kitna application aar hai, and how many of are getting sanctioned ultimately. 47% of the applications are getting rejected. Out of the applications coming on board, customer is asking for a loan, 47% of the application is getting rejected, 22% of the application is getting rejected at the KYC level itself. KYC ka andar kya hai sir? Bank has told us ki sir, aap, you, have to, you have to find out ki whatever the name that is written in income tax ka PAN card ke andar mein, GST return ke andar mein, passport ke andar mein aur uske ROC record ke andar mein, all names and addresses has to be same. Now it is impossible in India that your date of birth would be same in all the four records. Your addresses will be same or it, is, it will not be interpreted in any other way as per whatever that you might have changed the address or whatever. Sometimes your, I am not saying it can be father's name or some way you have forgotten or something else. 22% of the application get rejected only itself at the KYC level itself. 
देर आफ्टर कमिंग डाउन वेन यू आर्ट देन की सर देन यू हैव टू फिल अप द इनकम टैक्स रिटर्न एंड अदर थिंग इन द इनकम टैक्स रिटर्न दे हैव नॉट इवन फॉरगॉटन की सर उसके अंदर में उसके अंदर जो एनेक्शर लगना है कुछ एनेक्शर नहीं लगाया देर माइट बी समथिंग विच हैज डन तो इट इज इम प्रॉपर डॉक्यूमेंटेशन और इम प्रॉपर फाइलिंग ऑफ थिंग दैट फोर्टी सेवन परसेंट ऑफ द एप्लीकेशन विच आई एम पर्सनली इज ऑफ अवेयर कि दैट एप्लीकेशन इज गेटिंग रिजेक्टेड दिस इज फ्रॉम माई स्कोर मी एक्सपीरियंस आई एम से नाउ कमिंग बैक टू माई पर्सनल एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ रिसर्जेंट इंडिया लिमिटेड विच विच आई ऑल्सो ट्राई वेर आई डू दी मैनुअल कंसल्टिंग रिसर्जेंट इंडिया के अंदर हम लोग मैनुअल कंसल्टिंग करते हैं किसी को लोन चाहिए वी प्रिपेयर दी प्रोजेक्ट रिपोर्ट वी गो टू बैंक लाइक एनी अदर कंसल्टेंट दिस इज वॉट वी डू देर वी फेस टू मेजर इशूज वन इज द इंटरप्रिटेशन इशूज की इन टर्म्स ऑफ द अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड द डॉक्यूमेंटेशन इशूज जो अनिल जी ने बात बोली इन टर्म्स ऑफ की मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टीज विच आर देयर विच आर नॉट मॉडगेजेबल और द ऑफिस विच इज नॉट देयर द एड्रेस प्रूफ वी कैन नॉट गिव इट टू यू दिस इज अगेन देयर थर्डली इन दिस लास्ट डेफिनेशन चेंज ऑफ दिस एम एस एम ई रिटेल सेक्टर हैज बीन इंक्लूडेड इन टू इट सो इन द रिटेल सेक्टर वॉट एवर एम एस एम ई विच इज कैटरिंग टू बी टू सी सेगमेंट जहां पे बी टू सी से सेगमेंट प्लीज टाइन अंडरस्टैंड वेयर देर इज नो जीएसटी रिफंड इन बी टू बी इफ यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट बी टू बी यू विल गेट अ जीएसटी रिफंड इफ यू आर इन टू ए बिजनेस वेयर देर इज ए बी टू सी बिजनेस इट मीन्स इफ यू आर टेकिंग एनी इनपुट यू आर नॉट गेटिंग एनी क्रेडिट आउट ऑफ इट इफ देर इज नो क्रेडिट देर इज नो फन ऑफ यू आर गेटिंग इन टू कि मैं जीएसटी कंप्लाइंट क्यों बनू फालतू का अननेसेसरी का देर विल बी हंड्रेड ऑफ एड एक्ट विच विल बी कमिंग इन so approximately around if you now talk about all the shopkeepers or all the vendors of of all the country it means that segment is fully wiped off there is no incentive for them to get themselves regulated or to or to get themselves into the gst return mechanism it means 22% of the msme which is into the retail sector which is into the b2c segment they have got no incentive for them to get into gst compliant regime at all that is why you will see that out of 6 lakh crore whatever the numbers that we talk about only 1 crore msmes are only gst registered it means 5 crore msme pehle to 6 crore ka number sahi hai ki nahi wo mere ko galat lagta hai this also i see but i tell you whatever the numbers ministry all media houses everybody tells 6 crore msme i take that number 6 crore msme thereafter only 1 crore msmes are only registered in gst it means 5 crore msmes are not even registered in gst because of this b2c segment phenomenon so i think so we need to understand ki sir this kyc issue need to be resolved and please try and understand the pain for you in case if you want to change your name or address in your udyog aadhar card in your pan card in your passport office i think you might have got to change any time and you understand that how difficult for you is to get it changed and to get it aligned all the documents up there after what what would happen one msme or one micro enterprise he will try two three times he will not get into attempt what he will come and tell ki sir yuko bank wale jha saab loan nahi dete but he will not try and understand ki sir the basic document is there ki sir uske flaw kahan pe hai so we need to educate that the right say segment sir i think so that should be the issue. thank you sir okay so one theme that is coming out uh, from all your answers is that uh, of uh, high compliance costs co complex regulations etc so uh, mo most government schemes are for registered enterprises so is it that the benefits from registration uh, you know uh, they are exceeded by the costs of compliance uh, mr sharma would you weigh in on that please right thanks ravi uh, if we look at the compliance you know that the msmes have to go through uh, most of the msmes from an employment perspective they run a lean organization right so unlike a large organization they wouldn't have a compliance department so compliance is an indirect cost to them to comply as well as an indirect cost in terms of an opportunity cost itself right because those same energy resources time can be spent on some other value addition activities like marketing operations technology so it's a double whammy a direct compliance cost as well as an opportunity cost uh, and if you look at you know uh, the various uh, msme organizations they are the, the you know the jury is out what the number is 6 crores 7 crores but the fact of the matter is that 99% of the organizations in india are msmes right and you spoke about the demographic dividend early on right if india has to capitalize on this demographic dividend we need to provide employment to people and the only engine 
for doing that is the MSME ecosystem, which is where we need to bring down uh, these compliances, and many of them actually involve jail terms if not complied with. Right? So how I, we at Crystal see it is that you need to reduce this compliance burden, and that's the only way that you can provide employment to a really young India, which will lead to consumption. But hasn't there been a movement towards decriminalization of some of these laws in terms of just fines and not like jail terms as you're saying? Right. Or has there not been enough movement towards that? No, there definitely has been. The government has taken cognizance of this. Uh, but the ease of doing business that we talk about in India, the score going down from 142 to 63. So, you know, definitely something to cheer about. Uh, but the ease of doing business in Bharat, I would say, where a large part of the MSMEs thrive, uh, I would say it's still much more needs to be done on that front. For them, for the barriers to entry, for you know, new enterprises to come in and scale, right? Because scale is really important. If we compare ourselves with, say, a country like China, uh, they have uh, you know 33% lesser MSMEs, uh, but their MSMEs contribute 50% of their GDP, and China's GDP is five times that of India, right? So the MSMEs there are 10 times the size of the average MSME in India. So if we need to scale, we really need to work on the compliance front. Right. Mr. Bhardwaj, would you like to weigh on compliance? What do you advise your members? I mean, these things like this KYC, you know, compliance, I mean, this is like, you know, low-hanging fruits, isn't it? See, uh, again, MSME sector being hugely heterogeneous, what are the problems, for example, related to KYC typically are experienced when you're talking about the micro-enterprises. FISME represents the sector, but primarily our membership is small and medium. So they are better organized. Such problems are not there much uh, with them because they know how to get things done, like you know, they can uh, update their Aadhaar if the address change is there, etc. And they can manage uh, uh, these difficulties. But you know, the issue remains, and the issue is that the cost of compliance, uh, not, uh, apart from the cost of compliance, you know, certain problems are there where more than the fee it is, you know, how you manage it. The cost of managing the system is very high because whether it is related to labor laws, whether it is related to pollution related laws, whether it is related to fire related, related compliances, the flaw is in the law that was made sometimes back decades back and everything needs to change and update it. Those have not been done. For example, if you want to just survey around any factory area or any shops uh, or bazaars and you say that how many of them are complying with the fire, you would find that barely 1% would be complying the fire laws. And the reason is, if, you, if they apply to the fire department, the fire department is going to say that I do not have the enough resources to deploy and get them examined. So you need to change the law and allow a system of professionals to emerge for example, the chartered accountants have come to take care of the income tax and you know, accounting systems are. Similarly, in all compliance areas, we, there is a need to develop uh, a, a, a private sector professionals who can ensure that you have complied. And at the same time, they can, uh, uh, can say build the capacity of the person also, train them also, that how it could be done. Without that, the cost of compliance will remain high. Uh, on ease of doing business ranking, we have come down. That is true. And you know, the rankings are ranking. And uh, that's why the world, because of the criticism, the World Bank has discontinued this system, as you might be knowing. It is no more there now. The cost related to compliance remains very, very high in India. That is a fact. And it is not decreasing in spite of a large number of digitization, ex except in certain areas. Income tax, it has come down. Certainly. But it has not come down in GST. As a matter of fact, it has increased in GST, particularly for the smaller people. And, there, and, and in which other areas? Uh, all those areas that I have said, for example, pollution control, fire department, getting your uh, map examined and approved by uh, the urban bodies, the cost has increased. I mean, in terms of the... Uh, monetary outgo in order to manage the system. See, businessmen ultimately are pragmatic people, right? So th they are not going to fight uh, to the death in order to get a law changed. Instead, what they want is that, I, please let me continue uh, to do my business. What do you want? And ultimately, they manage uh, the environment. And that has a cost. 
that cost has increased that's what i'm trying to say okay so digitization does not seem to have worked as much as we think it has especially when it comes to dealing with complaints what do you, what do you think so i agree with the, your thought there and uh, when we interact with the uh, hundreds of msmes every month uh, we get to understand that uh, if i address on the compliance part that people are not worried about the cost they are they're ready to pay in more at times and the way uh, anil ji said that they manage the situation but the pain is a larger cost than the monetary cost because the, the time which it takes and the kind of number of rounds which you have to go through is painful i give you personal example in the last one month i've gone through two fundamental issues i i was supposed to do some kind of agreement with someone and that has to be in a stamp paper and i was going to banks for esbtr and i'm i was sending my team can you imagine in mumbai getting esbtr is a big pain it is actually uh, there is only one franken machine in entire mumbai and that is down over the last 15 days and i am not able to get the shareholder uh, the sh4 form uh, franken this is the situation and when i am giving this reason to the people who are waiting for it they said amit really are you sure that in mumbai in the financial capital this is down for the last 15 days zero answer i am ready to pay i said is there any other route i am ready to pay double so the cost is not the challenge whenever we interact people are ready to you know kind of respect that cost they are ready to invest in the governance people understand that the governance brings discipline uh, the better transparency and they if they want to scale they definitely need better governance but uh, even after spending money you don't get that so digitization is helping but the way we say that in an in a typical msme if we say okay if they are using tally zoho are they digitized yes and no because that is only one aspect of the entire value chain of digitization the truly digital msme is where right from the marketing to sales to operation to hr to payroll to the accounting to payments and bank integration and reconciliation everything should be digitized otherwise is like that kind of highway which is a 12 lane lane highway and then you have a bottleneck of one road it's of no use ultimately the bottleneck is still there that will not help right talking about complaints another area which you know we hear a lot about which is also related to access to financing is delayed payments Uh, an msme samadhan scheme which as some of you heard the minister said he will make it faster uh, but is compliance an issue there also mr sharma so uh, the samadhan scheme you know has the right intent definitely uh, in terms of uh, you know if you look at the working capital issue right that's a very critical issue for msme most of the credit requirement is on the working capital front so the intent there is very right that you have a portal where msmes can come log in their complaints and get the resolution uh, but if you see the uh, the quantum that in the number of uh, you know uh, crores of rupees that is logged there it's only a fraction of the real challenge there right and if one reflects as to why that that is the case is because the amount of documentation that you need uh, and the time that it takes to actually resolve the issue is much more uh, another challenge is that the msmes have to deal with the same buyer again and again right and if you take them uh, to the you know samadhan portal you're sort of aggravating the situation which they might not really want to do uh the third is that you know there needs to be more digital and artificial intelligence tools maybe a uh, uh, sort of the contract itself right each msme might have a different terms and terminology if there is a standardization of the contract itself and those are then brought to the samadhan portal 90% of the issues can be tackled through artificial intelligence tools and only the 10% will need manual intervention which can lead to faster resolution of these issues second another challenge is that many of these contracts that msmes have might not be really formalized they could be verbal contracts so how do you resolve those right so those are some of the challenges still prevalent uh, which is not completely solving the uh, credit challenge of the msmes so would giving more powers to msefc help you think it could help 
it could definitely help. Uh, what could also help is if we want to resolve the credit challenge, uh, something that we were discussing earlier is uh, banks may need to relook at how they traditionally fund uh, you know, the ecosystem. Banks are excellent at funding large organizations, right? They have a subsector strategy, so they'll have a different strategy for the automobile industry and a different strategy for the oil and gas industry. But at Crystal, when we interact with banks, both public and private sector banks and the top banks, they don't have a subsector level strategy for MSMEs. So, you know, do you lend to an edible oil player and a seafood player in the same manner? Possibly yes, when it comes to MSMEs, right? So that needs to evolve because what that is doing is banks are overpricing good risk and underpricing bad risk, right? And overall, they're having a suboptimal sort of an experience lending to MSMEs. Once the subsector strategy evolves for banks, that's where this problem can be alleviated to a large extent. Okay, so overpricing good risk, underpricing bad risk, Mr. Jha, how do you respond to that? Uh, yes. So, one more thing, which from bankers' perspective, I would miss out. So, I uh, that that I just want to tell that. See, we were just discussing till entry level um, uh, borrowings. Well settled, 10 year old MSMEs. Uh, we find enhancing the limits very difficult. The, the turnover was 5 crore, went to 10 crore, it went to 20 crore. The profit remains same. And then it becomes very challenging to justify where the margins are going. So a good MSME should see what is their vision from five years to now. Depending upon scale, very small, they should see at least two years vision. Maybe depending upon, so if they have a clarity on some tangibility on the vision, say five years, ten years, then at least the core numbers they should know. Because when we talk about numbers, they ask us, sir, wo to CA batayega. Business they are doing, numbers CA will tell. So if they want certain limits, they will revise the CMA data. So that is very essential that an MSME should see that where they see themselves from five years from now or ten years from now, and whether they need banking support for this growth. So they need to build their books accordingly. And that, then where the bankers are there, they very willingly, they will reach out to lend you more. So this is very important aspect for even existing MSME borrowers. But in terms of uh, risk pricing and in dealing with different subsectors, are, are new credit underwriting models Yeah, emerging? we were discussing before this session also that, 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 that way, I mean, uh, we also do not do that kind of analysis as of yet. But yes, within the overall sectors only, there are restricted sectors where the pricing will be a little higher. But more or less, uh, more, most of the MSMEs are not impacted by the, the, the same. So um, it's not really a big thing for now. So. Is there a need for customized products for MSMEs? Yeah, definitely. Now it is. Like for supply chain, uh, say many are going for uh, channel financing. Uh, channel financing for like many vendors are going for car, so car suppliers, car dealers. So there are channel financing products, each bank have dedicated products for that and that is uh, as the understanding of banks are deepening and uh, they are going into specialized products, becomes the more uh, the products are structured, it sells better. From the field perspective we see that the, if the products are very crystallized, structured, then the field people also don't need required to understand the intricacies of the things and they, uh, when they contract with the customers, the borrowers, it really gels nicely. Yeah. Okay, but in terms of my question on whether new credit underwriting models are emerging or different methods? Yeah, uh, see up to uh, 2 crore vertically now we are going digital. So most of the process are going to digital and very soon up to 5 CR also it will be going like that only. Uh, but but again it will question will come that all the compliances and all these all the benefits of this will again go to those who are really in compliance. So that remains very essential question. Even cash based lending also products are uh, public sector banks are it's an emerging space where cash based lending because uh, as books are not being maintained so nicely so sometimes cash based lending always gives the comfort and that, that's a space which will definitely emerge. Like pre-approved uh, personal loan in a sector where public sector banks were not doing well. For the last two, three years pre-approved personal loan is doing excellent totally digital lending and that is doing very nicely. So this is also one space which will grow the cash-based lending. 
मिस्टर गाडिया ही वॉज सेंग सी ए से नंबर्स मंगवाते हैं कंसल्टेंट्स को भी बोलते हैं क्या आप नंबर्स बता दीजिए बैंक्स को सर आई थिंक सो अपू फाइव करोड और टू करोड देर इज ए पर्टिकुलर शिफ्ट विच इज इमर्जिंग आइदर यू आर सॉफ्टवेयर लेंडेबल और यू आर नॉट सॉफ्टवेयर लेंडेबल अदि इट मीन्स अदि इफ यू कैन पास थ्रू दिस फाइव स्क्रीन्स ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर and then only the lending is possible for a small scale businessman otherwise why the uh, small scale businessman is facing difficulty because for the larger credit all these kyc issue all these non compliant issues for the larger credit also coming but what is happening their bank is devoting one personal manpower or a relationship manager there is a proper chain which understand the issues then they prepare a proper board note where all the issues are addressed and then the proper decision making is taking care but while for a smaller loan so much of bandwidth that the bankers also doesn't have and so much of itna hamare paas we don't have so much of thing which is there it means uh, there are two types of customers which are definitely under stress in terms of msme one is undecided customer another is unapproved customer it means there can be only customers who can only get a software generated loan there will be a customer which cannot get a software generated loan in terms of all the cash flow based lending in terms of bank uh, bre in terms of all the processes i think so in case if any bank has not adopted it it's a matter of time they will still adopt it but in terms of digital adoption digital lending i think so we are far more advanced and there are some banks which is just here and there we we should be there so only problem is that ki whether the msmes which cannot pass through these screens whether we have the manpower physical manpower possible to understand the issue and then to take care of that credit but why don't they pass through these screens they cannot pass through because as i said told you na in the software the first stage is that you have to pass through the kyc document so second he has to he has to sir, submit all the documents the third he has to sir, submit all the business income statements so he has to sir, submit screen 1 screen 2 screen 3 screen 4 all this document has to be sir, submitted one by one one by one so you have to pass through every screen in case if you stop at every screen the the loan application it 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 doesn't go, go through also at at that point of time regarding compliance which you were saying i will just uh, share two three personal examples of mine because since i am a startup and i have done two companies in resurgent india limited when we started in approximately after 3 4 years we were told by my accountant ki sir we should get a pf registration i told pf registration theek hai you can go and apply for any pf registration so he hired one consultant who was doing the pf consultant as soon as we filed the pf application this the bombardment of question came why you are not pf in panel for last 3 years this was the first question then give us all the record for last 3 years why i told sir we have recently started the company my i was not applicable under pf and other thing so it took us another next 2 years to not for the pf impanelment just to convince them ki sir that my pf impanelment was not applicable when i applied at that point of time regarding what the bhardwaj ji sir told ki if we apply for a fire or apply for a pollution license definitely uh, they don't have the bandwidth to come and check it problem is another more there was one client whom we were working for asking he was asking for a loan so we were working to so bank told ki iska fire license nahi hai fire license leke aaye when we applied for a fire license fire license people came and inspected the factory and they and they told us so many thing that we have to shift to a new factory at all or we cannot operate in that factory itself so my loan which was at a last stage of sanction only thing the sanction letter only pointed out ki sir you just apply for a fire license sir my entire company and existence came at stake because of that fire license approval i was operating for last 20 years without that approval as soon as i applied it the 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 authority came to know that i exist fire authority came to know ki yahan pe ek factory hai wo exist karti hai sir the point that it came to know that i exist here it i just became a scapegoat for them and they told us so many things to ramp up in the factory itself that either i have to shut down the factory or i have to renovate the entire factory so i have to apply a new loan to the bank not for the loan which i was applying for i have to apply for a new loan to a bank ki sir humko nayi factory banani hai purani factory band karne hai तो सर दिस आर सम ऑफ द इश्यूज आई थिंक सो कि कंप्लायंस के लिए देर आर टू मोर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स सर 
we are also helping companies in doing the private equity transaction. When you do a private equity, so the other investor, they do a due diligence on you. So there are other big four and there are other agencies in the due diligence. In last 15 years, sir, all the big companies which has gone into private equity transaction, either through us or through anybody, the taxation or the compliance due diligence, as tak aisi koi company nahi mili hai, where there is not less than 100 page of non-compliance has come in. So it means if all the compliant companies, all the good companies, which are in the process of raising private equity are going for an IPO, in case if they, in, in case if they hire a consultant for getting a due diligence, they will always get that report. So it means 100% of the company, 40% of the promoter's time, and for an MSME, I have calculated and seen that approximately 18 to 20 lakhs of, peop, of the money every year that micro company has to spend in case if they want to get basic compliance. I'm not even talking about the Usko Sops and Establishment Act, all these basic, basic four or five things if you need to comply, he has to spend that much amount of money. And 30 to 40 percent of the promoter's time that he has to spend to get themselves at least for the basic compliance factor. So these are the two things. And 90% of our Compliances Act says that there is a criminal offense for everything. So if you do anything, you will be in jail. This is the only line that they have, that for every single non-compliance, there is an item called that you will be behind bars. There is nothing called a, in, into that type of any other offense or any other trajectory we don't understand, sir. Thank you. Sure. Okay, uh, we are running out of time. So one final question which I would like to pose to all panelists, uh, starting from Pushan. 30 seconds each, if there is one reform which you would like to institute, you know, for the betterment of the MSME sector, what would that be? Uh, in terms of reform, if there was one thing, and the challenge because it's credit oriented, I think that needs to be attacked. Uh, more. I think uh, cluster development has been uh, spoken about. I think the entire ecosystem needs to work on the cluster development bit. Uh, if we look at global examples, there is a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, sharing that happens between MSMEs when it comes to procurement. Uh, banks can also benefit from a cluster-based approach. They'll have more familiarity, benchmarking in doing their lending. So cluster-based approach for the entire ecosystem is what needs to be focused on. Mr. Kumar? So, uh, raise the money, raise the fund in good times so that uh, you don't have to run around here and there in bad times because in MSME sector it always happens reverse. Whenever you are in bad times you go out and no investor is ready to give you money. So, I say reverse the approach. Whenever you have good time, raise the money so that you can survive better in bad times. Thank you. Mr. Bharat? Well, competition in India, in, in the factor markets, whether it is access to finance, I mean finance, but particularly raw material. Today the situation is this, that, uh, you know, we were talking about delayed payment. You know, whether you give, um, with you empower uh, facilitation councils, whether you do something in income tax, or whether you create a trade, uh, trade uh, platform, trades platform, it is not going to solve the problem. The problem is actually different. And it is that whether it's a large company, which is your buyer, or it is government, it, give it, it gives a damn to pay you in time. You can't do anything for this. Larger companies in India are protected by high customs duties, whether it is auto, 50 to 100 percent, no competition. Whether it is iron and steel, copper, aluminium, plastic raw material, and polymers. All of them put together, which are largely uh, the lead, leaders of the supply chains and buyers of MSMEs, they are completely protected. They give a damn. They don't have any competition. If you create competition in the factor markets, then they would value their suppliers and pay them in time and train them. Like, for example, it is happening in Korea, whether it's happened in Japan, in, in Taiwan, even in China. Shikari. I think it's time just we start thinking in a different way, my, coach, my thought process would be that how we can start incentivizing the good MSMEs instead of talking about how the bad MSME can become good. How can we just start making the role model for the good MSME? Good MSME doesn't mean that he's paying loan on time, he's paying electricity bill on time, he might be paying telephone bills on time, he might be paying all his labors on time. Can we, can Crystal prepare a rating model for all these types of parameters and we can start rating the MSMEs and we can start 
advertising those MSME and we can start giving them some sort of benefit, maybe through GST or maybe through income tax. Thank you. Uh, I would suggest that uh, MSME education funds and things sort where uh, can be kept in CSR and uh, various chambers are there. Uh, in Delhi also I found that they are doing wonderful work. They are bringing bankers and MSME on various platforms. Uh, and that's, uh, that can be encouraged in a very more professional manner. Across India, we may have few uh, organizations, uh, the, the sub-bodies, where MSMEs can freely go understand uh, the, what is the latest thing and very real things they can understand and get to know how they can make their proposals bankable from bank perspective and the compliance side as well. That will facilitate uh, uh, many, I am sure 30-40% bankable proposals are not coming to the banks at least. So those will be easily coming to us and that will help the chain moving fast. Right. Uh, so we are out of time. Thank you to all the panelists for your insights and comments. Hope you found the session uh, useful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ravi, and all the panelists for that very interesting panel discussion. Would request Ravi to please give a token of our appreciation to all the panelists.